On the Clinton River in Michigan, the trail map indicates a mandatory portage at Yates Dam that in reality isn't really mandatory. A simple search of the internet indicates that boaters routinely run the dam. My involvement with the Clinton River involves two cases. Joseph Miranda drowned at Yates Dam on July 3, 1999. He ran the dam once and then ran it again. The second time he drowned in the hydraulic behind the dam. Almost to the day a year later, Melanie Carlson drowned on a strainer in the Clinton River. The same weekend, the local news reported a high water drowning at Yates's Dam. Yates's Dam was involved in two of the fatalities. Using Yates Dam as an example, this video explores translating messaging into on-site barriers, including physical barriers, which are important in providing a safe environment for boaters. Yates's Dam is a typical mill dam used to divert a portion of the river along a sluiceway to operate the water wheel at Yates Cider Mill. At low water, the dam is impassable and needs to be portaged. As the water level increases, the dam becomes runnable, and the hydraulic behind the dam becomes larger. The roughly four-foot drop-off from the dam is steep, and a canoe can easily breach the hydraulic and reach the boil and backwash. The trick is to keep the canoe parallel with the current, paddle with some speed, hit the backside of the boil, and avoid becoming sideways in the hydraulic. Although numerous pictures on the internet show canoes running Yates Dam, getting sideways in the hydraulic can be fatal. The hydraulic behind the dam is uniform from shore to shore. Often called the drowning machine, it is potentially a killer. Yates's dam has taken its toll of victims. The Clinton River water trail map indicates that there is a mandatory portage at the Yates Cider Mill Dam. The dam is not mentioned as the reason for the portage. If there is a mandatory portage of the dam, then it is important to translate the warning on the map into on-site messaging, warnings, and barriers. The following are suggestions to accomplish this. A sign indicating the portage and portage trail should be placed above the dam at the entrance to the portage trail. The sign, its size, and its location can vary greatly but it should be readily visible from the upstream side of the portage. A good idea is to post a copy of the portage sign on the point of entry sign at the put-in so that boaters know what they are looking for when reaching the dam and portage trail. Part of the Uniform State Waterway Marking System, regulatory buoys are used to warn of a pending danger. The orange diamond indicates danger. The danger is usually placed within or below the diamond. Buoys can be placed above and below Yates Dam to warn of danger. They should be placed below the dam because boaters can easily paddle back upstream in the slack water behind the dam. Care should be taken so that the placement of the buoys do not create a hazard for boaters themselves. The buoys warn of danger. However, they don't prohibit running the dam. A cross inserted in the diamond indicates entry into the areas prohibited by boaters. Installing buoys would require some maintenance since the dam seems to collect debris floating down the river. Think of messaging as a fluid flow of information from the map used for trip planning to the point of entry sign at the put-in to the signage at the dam complemented by the physical barriers of the buoys. When boaters see the portage sign on the river, the messaging has already prepared them for the portage. The warning buoys are physical barriers that complement the signage and its message. Other than the map, the on-site elements are missing. Suggesting incongruity in the messaging, the mandatory portage on the map is not really mandatory. As previously noted, a simple internet search indicates boaters routinely running the dam. It is not difficult. However, a miscalculation can be fatal. 
If the portage is deemed mandatory, physical barriers need to be placed above and below the dam to prevent boaters from running the dam. If not, consider changing the wording on the map to recommended portage or something similar. Congruent messaging is important. Does it really make a difference that a mandatory portage on the map is not really mandatory? Discuss. Even with the risks of a river-wide hydraulic, some boaters have the skill to successfully run Yates Dam at higher water levels. Should a mandatory portage be enforced, and should additional physical barriers be added to prevent boaters from running the dam? Discuss what measures could be taken to prevent boaters from running Yates Dam. Barrier analysis places barriers between the source of an unwanted energy flow and the target. The target is the boaters. An unwanted energy transfer to the target results in an incident or accident. In this case, drowning in the hydraulic created by the dam. This video has emphasized messaging as a barrier. Consider additional messaging sources. Discuss how you might use brochures, social media, additional points of entry signage, and the talk up at the put-in as additional messaging barriers. In a 1999 affidavit, I recommended providing signage and regulatory buoys at Yates's Dam. Over 20 years later, recent internet photos suggest no corrective measures have been implemented. In providing a safe environment for boaters, the messaging needs to be congruent.